Many men wish death upon me, blood in my eye, dog, and I can't see. I'm trying to be what I'm destined to be, and they trying to take my life away. That was the song that Donald Trump was singing this weekend while worldwide news was made from his attempted assassination. Now, you know we don't get into the politics here, but this has had a big impact on the market. Specifically, Bitcoin has been flying. Tesla's been flying, as well as DJT and a number of others. I'm going to give you guys some strong opinions about the bullishness of these markets, but I just wanted to tell you one thing, that if that bullet had pierced his head, I want to assure you that markets would have crashed today. And you might say, well, why, Josh? Is because markets like certainty. They don't like uncertainty. And right now, Donald Trump is leading the polls and his numbers have gone even higher after this attempted assassination. And the markets price that information in already. They do not want to have uncertainty. And if he was wiped off the face of this earth, then that's what we'd be dealing with. So just keep in mind that the fact that he did not die is part of why the markets are going to climb right now. I've been asking for the last two weeks, are we in the process of a bullish blow off top? And I'm going to go straight bull today. I'm going to examine four of the Magnificent Seven. We're going to review the rest on the following video, and I'm going to give you opportune tops that I see that we could potentially hit in all of these because momentum at this point on the Magnificent Seven is still showing strength. There's been some pullback, but just enough perhaps to make a blow off top still in these markets that are ever climbing. We saw the S&P 500 hit all time highs today yet again, while the VIX, which measures volatility, was at an all time low, sub $13. How long can this last? Well, one analyst in particular says it's not going to last very long. He sent out a client letter stating that to expect increased volatility in the coming days. So we know that July is typically a good month and July has proven to be a good month but there will be some digestion and it does appear to me that the markets are gonna try to touch the very top on all of the Magnificent Seven here before we have any kind of significant pullback. And I'm gonna give you guys those lines in the sand. Remember, it's not a political page. I'm not getting political. I'm just talking about the news stories that are moving the markets. Don't tell me about how who you hate or who you love in the comments. Let's just keep this a united family. We're focused on growing generational wealth here. We're focused on learning the charts better each and every day to give us better entries and better exits. And in particular, I'm gonna cover a couple hot plays that I did in the Discord today, as well as a trade that I alerted about 30 days ago that's absolutely hitting my target, and that's Palantir. I'm gonna give you guys the potential of a high-end target. What? Line in the sand number am I watching to finally take profit on Palantir? Well, I'll let you guys know that today as well. This is the Stocks with Josh Show. Thank you for hitting that like already. I know so many of you guys do it the minute you see the video, and I appreciate that because the likes push the video out to more viewers. Thanks. If you're new to the page, and hit the subscribe so you can get the daily TA that we drop in here. Another interesting news story regarding Donald Trump. He finally chose his vice presidential nominee, a guy by the name of J.D. Vance. Didn't know who he was, but I'm sure he's got his reasons. All right, let's talk about some of the stocks briefly that got a bump today. I did some technicals over the weekend alerting that DJT could hit as high as $40, and even if we got above $42, squeeze as high as $62. Well, we hit $52 pre-market, and we've been pulling back since. But I don't know that the DJT run is over. I'd specifically watch the line in the sand of $38. If we open and close beneath $38, well, then it's going to continue to cool. But if we can stay above $38 on the daily time frame, well, then it's going to stay hot. Bitcoin has been pumping, and on a side note, I'm going to be at the Bitcoin conference at the end of this month, and interestingly, Donald Trump will be speaking there, as well as RFK. It'll be interesting. I'll see if I can take some photos and let you guys know what's said there, but we know that one of the reasons why Bitcoin has gotten a bump based on the Donald Trump news is because Donald Trump has been aligning himself pro-crypto, and so a pro-crypto president is good for Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is responding to that news. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, we're going to keep it very simple. I'm going to keep my analysis of Bitcoin simple. I told you guys last Tuesday that we had to get above 60,600 by the end of last week to cancel the bearish trend that we were in. Well, we've done that. 
but there are some important lines in the sand that we need to be watching in this week. One, it's moving back above the middle of our descending channel, which currently we have done. Now we're up against a resistance at 63,600, and if we can get above that price, I can see Bitcoin right now going to 66,000. That's a number that I gave you guys last week as well. But we have to see how Bitcoin responds at 66,000, see whether or not we are still in a downtrend. How would we know that? Well, we would lose the center of that descending line. And that would mean that we would be going back to the bottom to retest structure. We've got to stay within the structure that we're in right now. We recovered, so things are bullish, but we can't lose it in this next week. Now, tomorrow I'm going to do a deep dive on crypto, and I'm going to let you guys know one of my biggest plays that I'm in right now, a crypto that I haven't talked about much, but I did talk about it during the last video that I did with Tim, and I'm going to do a deep dive on this crypto project and let you guys know why I'm so bullish and why I've been buying so much of it lately. I want you guys to make sure not to miss tomorrow's video, Tuesday's Technicals with Tim on crypto and stocks. Let me just take a quick moment and shout out some of the wins that we had in the Stocks with Josh Discord today. I alerted very early in the morning a spy put and took a small profit on that, hit 20%, but the market confirmed bullish and we took off like a rocket and we jumped into calls. And I got, I think, around 33% on that, but we could have gotten up to 66%. I just happened to be turning my attention to something else and trading another stock, but a lot of people made out very well, getting, I think, around an average of 66% on those spy calls. And then later we alerted Meta and we ran Meta up nicely, a beautiful win on Meta. And I alerted when it looked like it was peaking out and said, guys, it's time to take profit. We avoided getting back in because it showed a lot of weakness, but it is one of the Magnificent Seven that I'm not convinced is completely ready to roll over yet. Now, I'm actually not going to cover Meta today. I'm going to cover Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Amazon because I haven't covered them in a while. And I'm going to let you guys know the absolute tops that I see as a potential in each of those plays from a technical perspective right now. And so if you're in any of them, this is where you could potentially hold on to your winners and make the biggest gain. But going back to the stocks with Josh Discord, if you don't know what that is, that is the Chart Goat University where I'm dropping trade alerts on stocks options and crypto. Every single trading day, you'll get some play from me and we're focused on education. Dropping micro classes on Tuesday and Thursday so that all of you guys can master the charts and become the chart goat of your own trading journey. This is about you guys. Check it out. I'll leave a link in the top pinned comment. All right, let's talk about Apple for a minute. Guys, I'm going to take you into the chart, but here's what I want you to look at before I, you even set eyes on it. Just understand that each candle is climbing higher and higher. Now the pitch of these candles is pretty extreme, which means that this is not a slow, gradual move up. This is a pretty strong move up on Apple. Now when Apple had broken out above $210, I had predicted that we were gonna get to $240 in that range, 244, and I see that coming to pass based on the structure of Apple right now. now what that's going to look like to me, though, because of the pitch of the move, is a blow off top. I'm not expecting us to build from there. I'm expecting us to hit that price target. And here's what you want to watch out for. A strong close above $233, and that will give us the squeeze to $246. And I want you to note carefully that Apple will then be up near 50% from its swing low of $165. And so, yes, I am bullish on Apple right now. 233 is the line in the sand, and we could potentially hit 246, but you want to be considering how you might hedge your investment. But I wanted you guys to be aware, Apple, king of stocks, still at the moment getting ready to potentially make a blow off top this year. And then Microsoft, a strong contender in market cap with Apple. And I just want to point this chart that I marked up quite a while ago. I gave the target way back at 385 that we could potentially reach a market top somewhere around $500 in 2025. It looks like we're going to get there much sooner. I called a market top around 450 in 2024, but we are just continuing to move higher. Now, if we don't reclaim that 450 to 460 dollar level then i will have been accurate we could pull back from here but if we do get above that level then we will get all the way to my 2025 high 
in Microsoft. Keep a close eye on it. And I also want to point out the stochastic RSI that there is actually room up on the weekly time frame to make another strong push higher. And that's what could possibly get us to that range of around 489. All right, now let's show some love for NVIDIA. I haven't covered them in a while. I've been dropping technicals on them quite often in the Discord, but let's take a look at the chart and see what is potentially there. Remember, we're engaging or embracing the bullishness of the markets and the opportunity for reaching blow off tops in each of these stocks. That's what we're looking at right now. We are not going to examine the swing low until we get a confirmation of a breakdown, which we don't have just yet. So let's see where NVIDIA could go if we were to get above the next resistance level. All right, the first thing I want to show you is that we have been moving steadily higher over the last couple of weeks. Now, we are in a little bit of a precarious spot. We came recently, touched the top of it around $137, and I had warned that we would be dealing with resistance there. Now we've come back un under the middle of it, and we've actually back-tested another area of significant resistance at 132. Now, both of these moves are pretty darn bearish, but we still have some room on the stochastic weekly RSI to turn up and move to the top of the range. Even though NVIDIA has been moving up slowly, it absolutely can have a breakout move if these markets want to carry it higher. Now, here's what I'm gonna tell you guys. This is all going to come down to one number in my eyes, and that is going to be 132. We just fell beneath it today, but this whole thing on NVIDIA can turn around and Nancy and I and you can make bank if we can get back above 132. And here's how I want you to look at it. The stochastic has not been showing a lot of strength, but it's pointing in the right direction, which is up on the weekly time frame. which means that as soon as the bulls want to begin to push liquidity back into NVIDIA, if we can get a squeeze above 132, we will hit all-time highs, and the blow-off top for NVIDIA that I see as a potential is $150. And that's where I think you're going to see a ton of profit taking. Now, let me know in the comment section what you think of the Apple prediction I gave. What do you think of the NVIDIA prediction I gave? The last big tech I'm going to cover is Amazon. And this is an important play because this one's been under some selling pressure. There has been the fact that Jeff Bezos has been selling some of his shares. But we've seen in the past that the very minute that he stops selling, that the stock can just go up much higher than it had. And again, the default view that we're looking at right now is where can this go if the markets are going to remain bullish? And what would the catalyst be that would bring the markets down? At the moment, I don't see a catalyst that would bring the markets down. The only one that could have actually crashed these markets would have been the assassination of Donald Trump, but that was a miss. And so the markets can continue to climb. So let's take a minute and go into the Amazon chart and see how high can we actually go there. All right, you see that I've got marked the $188 support range, but I don't believe that we actually have to come all the way back here to go higher. I believe that we've actually pulled back enough from the recent all-time high that we made of $200, and I'm gonna keep my coverage super simple. If we get back above 198, then I believe that this could hit above 200 and squeeze to 210. 210 is my target, and I wanna point out the same thing I've been showing you guys on the weekly stochastic. We are in a turned up position. Yes, we've come back a little bit, but this can turn back up and push all the way to the 100% mark, getting Amazon all the way up to $210. And what I would say about it then is that it's pretty lofty and we will truly have a blow off scenario on all four of those stocks that I gave you. I'm gonna give you the rest of big tech here in the coming video, but I also wanna remind you that we are seeing some rotation out of big tech over into the Russell 2000 IWM. Now that could cool off while big tech goes on to make one final push. And then after that, you could see more profit taking if we hit the numbers that I gave you and more rotation into the Russell. That's kind of what I'm expecting at the moment. I wanted you guys to have some numbers in mind as to where this could go. Each of those is a technical level. I wanna cover one more trade that I gave you guys over a month ago that's coming into fruition, and that's Palantir. Okay guys, this is the range that we're in. We've been in the range around $20, with the high end being a touch of my ascending channel at $32. And yes, that's the area that I'm looking for Palantir to have some sort of a blow off top, a crazy wick candle and possibly touch. Now, I do wanna warn you guys that that touch could occur 
aftermarket, pre-market, we don't know, but that's the range I'm looking for Palantir to ultimately touch the top of my channel. And I'm hoping that if we can get above 30, I can raise my stop loss to $29, and at bare minimum, I will try to lock those gains in. Where did those gains come from? Well, we took the position back here at $22. We had at the time, and this is important to pay attention to, we had been watching for this to come down and touch the bottom of our channel, which it didn't do, which also means that we could come up and skirt the top of our channel right around $31.50 and still fail to meet. And so it's a little bit interesting that we never touched the bottom, but it would be perfect if we touched the top because that would be potentially an area of taking some profits if you were predisposed to taking profits. I alerted this a second time when we got above $24 that we were going on this run. And I know a lot of people have showed me in the Discord some very high profit taking in the thousands of dollars. It's been an incredible run. I'm holding my winner a little bit longer. That's the theme of this video is to sort of just go straight bullish and see what the markets want to give to us. But of course, you need to take precautions. Don't be afraid to use a stop loss. Make sure that you have some game plan for risk management. I can't tell you what August is going to be, but it seems as if there's the potential for more here in July in the last couple weeks. And so we're going to be holding on to these winners and Palantir is one of them and see if we can't squeeze out a little bit more of a gain. Now, I also like the stochastic on the weekly time frame for Palantir. It's one of the reasons why I'm remaining bullish on the opportunity for a push up to $32. But there's many from a fundamental standpoint that would argue that Palantir is expensive at this price point. And so you have to be aware that there will be profit taking just like there will be on Apple, Nvidia, Amazon, Meta, all of the big tech stocks, and there's going to be rotation. That's why we're keeping a very close eye on IWM in the days ahead. Guys, making a lot of calls. I didn't cover all of them here with you guys today, but you can get all of them over in the Stocks with Josh Discord. Make sure you check that out. Uh, thank you again for the like. Hit that subscribe if you want to get this content. Appreciate each and every one of you. Peace and blessings. Take care. <laughs>